Linearizing is something that's going to pop up several times throughout the year. We're not going to see it for a couple of weeks, but since we are starting graphing, linearizing deals heavily with graphing, I figured it would be a good time to introduce it. So although we will not be linearizing in the lab for a few more weeks, this is something that will be important and will be coming back throughout the year. When I say linearizing, I'm referring to looking for a relationship between data points so that when graphed, they become a straight line. What does that mean? That means you do a lab, you get your data, you graph it. We always have our independent variable on the x and our dependent variable on the y. Let's say we graph and we get a graph that looks like that. If I drew it a little bit better, it might be completely obvious that it looks like a top opening parabola. So what we would then have to do would be look at the data and figure out what kind of relationship exists between the x and the y in order to make a top opening parabola. Well, you know that for a top opening parabola, y is proportional to x squared. So to linearize, you would take all of your x values, square them, and then regraph. If this is indeed a top opening parabola, when you make your test graph, you would end up with a straight line. If it's not a top opening parabola, then you would get something that's not a straight line, and you would have to either try a different relationship or linearize again. There are four main types of graphs that we'll see this year. I'm going to go through all four, uh, the relationship between the x and the y variables, and what you would have to do to linearize. The first graph is the simplest one. x and y axis, you make a graph, it turns out to be a line. So a line is a direct relationship where y is directly proportional to x. If you have a line, the graph is already linearized, you don't have to do anything. The second type of graph that we may see was just on the previous slide, and it's going to look like a top opening parabola. And a top opening parabola, or any parabola for that matter, is a square relationship. Top opening parabola is where y is proportional to x squared. I already explained on the previous slide what you would do to linearize slide, what you would do to linearize this. You would take your x values, square them, leave your y values the same, regraph. If it is a top opening parabola, you would get a line. The third shape graph that you might see is this one. This is a side opening parabola. A side opening parabola is where y is proportional to the square root of x. You could also say y squared is proportional to x, but we're going to mostly stick with y is proportional to square root x. So to linearize a side opening parabola, you again leave your y values the same, you take the square root of your x values, and then you regraph. And our fourth type of graph is a hyperbola. A hyperbola just means that the relationship is inverse, so y is proportional to 1 over x. To linearize this, you would take all your x values, put 1 over all those x values, leave the y values the same, and regraph. Again, if it's a line, then you have an inverse relationship. You might find also that if you linearize, you get 
another graph. So for example, say you have what appears to be a side opening parabola. You do the test plot, so you take the square root of all your x values, but after you do that, you end up with a hyperbola. It's okay to linearize twice. This might be a relationship y is proportional to the square root of 1 over x. So it is possible to have to linearize more than once. Uh, we will see inverse square relationships where you have y is proportional to 1 over x squared. Again, that's where you would have to linearize and you would get maybe this shape followed by this shape to get 1 over x squared. Linearizing will pop up several times throughout the year, so this is not going to go away. If this looks a little bit confusing, give it a couple of days, it'll start making a lot more sense. I'm going to do an example to see how linearizing works. And for probably the only time this year, I'm going to do this with no units. So given this data table, x, y, let's say x is 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Y is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And if I graph these points, X, Y, let's label my axes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, for the Y, I'm going to count by 1s. And for the X, I'm going to count by 5. This is just what makes sense to do given the data. And then if we graph this, we've got 1 and 1, so over 1, up 1. We've got 4 and 2. We have 9 and 3. 16, 4, and 25, 5. If I connect these points, I get a graph that looks like that. If you refer to the previous slide, this graph looks suspiciously like a side opening parabola, meaning that y would be proportional to the square root of x. To see if this is in fact a side opening parabola, I'm going to do a test plot. So for the test plot, because I know this relationship is y is proportional to the square root of x, I'm going to keep my y values the same and I'm going to square root all of my x values. So I need to make a new data table, this time with the square root of x, but keeping all my y values the same. So y is still 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 25 is 5. Now I want to graph these values. So on my test graph, on the x-axis I now have the square root of x. On my y-axis, I still have y. And I'm going to label my axes with their numbers. They both go from 1 to 5, so I'm just going to make each tick mark 1. We have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. This was obviously a line before we even graphed it, which means that this is in fact a side opening parabola and the relationship between these variables is uh, y is proportional to the square root of x. So this is how you linearize. After this week we'll be doing pretty much everything on the computer so you won't have to really worry about doing calculations on your own. Uh, Excel has some great functions that do calculations and graphs for you, but you do need to know what the graphs are, what you do to linearize said graphs, and the names of each of those relationships. We'll do some more practice with this in class tomorrow, 
so please make sure you took pretty good notes and come to class with any questions.